everybody. Now, um, I'm Stella Magana, like you've heard, and uh, I'm here to represent She Hacks Kenya. So, She Hacks is an organization that creates a safe space for women in cybersecurity around Kenya to learn, to grow, to network. And today, I thought we should cover, you know, unlearning to relearn. So many times you've been told what to do, how to do it, how to achieve this, how to achieve that. But today I want us to talk about the don'ts. As a lady in science, as men in science, what should you do as you celebrate this day? I want us to look at ourselves in the mirror. Okay, we don't have a mirror with ourselves right now, but mentally. As the professor has mentioned, all this is a mind issue. So I want us to look at the mirror and have a mental taking stock. You know, let's, let's, let's count what we have done so far, both in our careers, both in the, in the academic field. So one thing, so as ladies in science, we know we're supposed to work hard. We know we're supposed to achieve the best grades. But you cannot do all that and factor out other skills in the marketplace. For example, I had a, a friend who worked in the same place. Um, they were very good at their job. They came on time, they loved their job, and unfortunately, due to their way they have been brought up, um, they could not merge with the entire team. So when the boss says, let's meet at this time, they are wondering how come I was not given a heads up before that meeting. And mind you, all workplaces are different. They have different cultures. So in that place, it was very ad hoc. Cyber security, you tend to work with a lot of uh, incidences and research, and things go, come on the go. A client might come up, and you need to go and meet them. And it became a constant issue where they would get so offended, and they were justified to be offended, that they were not told beforehand of a particular decision. And due to that, they became incompatible with the rest of the team, and they had to lose. So one of the don'ts I want us to cover is your personality in science, as a lady in science. Your personality has to be all-rounded, like Professor has mentioned. We have challenges, we have different background upbringing, but come what may, the rubber has to hit the road. Now, um, time. It is good to be very ambitious. It is actually encouraged that you should have goals. I believe we all made our New Year resolutions. And, um, one thing about being in the tech space, things move fast. So we have heard of young people in the universities getting a job, an entry level job. Next thing, they're a manager in a good uh, technical company and they're doing well and they're doing well. And um, I've seen this in She Hacks where among us, our members, due to the different um, you know, speed at gaining the technical skills, some tend to leave the others in success. And, uh, you know, you find them getting very disappointed the fact that they're not making it. You know, my friend got this at you are both, you know, in the same interview panel, but there's a cost you have to pay. Success is not overnight. And you're not competing against others, you know. So always know that um, you have to pay the cost. You need to stay somewhere, learn, get experience, then move. Another don't want us to cover is certifications. Um, I'm, I'm coming from a point of assumption. So how many are actually in science in this room? A course in science, a job in science. And I believe the rest are in the arts world, arts field, yeah? How many are in the arts? Oh, Karibu Nisana. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> so, you find that in, the, in our field, in the, art, in the science field, there is this notion where if you get as many certifications as possible, you stand a higher chance of getting hired. And um, sometimes that's not the best way to do it because as a recruiter, I will meet Ruth and I'll meet Professor. And Ruth has seven certifications 
professor has several years of doing a particular task in a particular field. As much as Ruth is very charismatic and can show what she can do, I will prefer professor. Because translating theory into actually practical work is the whole difference here. So have a balance. So as women in science, do not always run for that certification. Actually have a balance between experience, gaining work experience, and now taking the certification. Let it be I am doing the certification so that I can better my knowledge in a particular area, not because I want to get a job. OK. Now, um, there's something called dependency syndrome and superwoman syndrome. I'll cover the dependency syndrome. Um, I don't know if you've realized in class, maybe even at the workplace, when there's a lecturer who asks a question, and before a lady shoots up her hand, she will have to conf you know, confirm with the desk mate, who happens mostly to be a gentleman. But this siyansa nihi, before they can raise their hand, true or false? Why do we do that? Because in our subconscious, we do not believe <laughs> that we could be right. As much as um, I believe Professor has had and seen it all, I believe in our times it's a little bit better. Yeah, a little bit better, but we are still having similar challenges. And um, this is not to talk down on any gentleman in this room. This is just to uplift the lady and tell you that, believe that when you're giving that answer, it is right. This translates to this. I have had um, so several ladies in, in, in the SheHacks. We do a lot of webinars weekly. And we approach a lady and tell her, I would like you to cover this topic, a technical topic mostly. And they will tell you, hey, to be honest, tell her, I don't want to do it. We are wondering, is it internet? Is it electricity? What's the, what's the reason? They say they have never presented before. When you're like, it's, it's fine. You have to start from somewhere. And they actually suggest, can I present it with my friend called Brian? <laughs> you see? And that dependency syndrome may look obvious, but it is ingrained in us one way or another. Now I want us to cover some of the consequences of that. And uh, the reality is not everybody has a perfect start in life. There are those who have come from families that, you know, they have been well educated, well exposed, and we have scenarios of professor where you have to really fight to make it, you know. And um, I've done a little mini uh, research on all these people who give their stories of success, whether business or whether career, and they are from rags to riches kind of concept, and you will notice none of them is bitter. None of them will angrily say, uh, my father did not educate me, but I'm here now. All of them will tell you how, in a humorous way, they had a very hard upbringing, but they did their due diligence, and they are where they are, they are, where they are now. So it's all about the mind. Not everybody has the perfect start. But know what you do with your time, with your life, is up to you. A quick story of uh, Sunday when I was in an Uber. Um, I realized the gentleman was too happy. It was almost uncomfortable. I, hello, is Stella here? I enter the car. And uh, he's there smiling, you know, reversing. And I'm like, hi, uh, how long have you done this job? He told me, actually, this is my, his first Sunday. It was on a Sunday. He started his job on a Monday. And I'm like, oh, OK. So how come you're this excited? What's, what's the celebration? He mentioned to me that, you know, I used to be a border, border driver. And now I was able to get this car. And here I am doing this job. And I'm like, what do you mean boda boda? You can imagine somebody, maybe at a, you know, maybe they haven't even finished their education, but here they are driving me, <laughs> you know, a lady in science. And I was very inspired and impressed. So I asked him the details of how he was able to do what he did. And he gave me the timeline of how it took him, savings and doing jobs here, doing jobs there, and finally bought that car. And I was like, his, his name is Kevin. And I was very, very impressed. So he had a different start in life, but look what he did with his life. So always have in mind that you can do it. 
Now, another thing I'd like us to demystify is the role of others in your life. Um, how many genuinely in the, in the room have mentors? I'm seeing four, five, six, seven, eight confident hands. Okay. Um, I believe um, the mentors that you have are Kenyan. It's not Michelle Obama. It's good to admire them. Why am I saying that? I'm saying that because uh, you need somebody you can relate to. You need somebody you can call. You need somebody you can actually, um, they can actually understand what you're going through. I'll give an example of myself. So um, I once applied for um, a competition in the UN that was looking for concepts and papers on cybersecurity. And we came up a group, we were able to succeed and we are the first in Kenya. And happily we went to the embassy to apply for our visas. And as a student, uh, you rarely have a bank statement that has money, it's zero, zero. So I did not know when you're a student you're supposed to use your parent or your guardian's bank statement to apply for these documents and state that you're a student, I don't have a job, so for the bank statement you give, your guardians. And believe it or not, I went happily applied for that visa and you know I was left. Just because I did not have a role model who I could quickly call and ask, by the way, this is happening and this is what I'm doing, that had advised me. You get my point? So for those who do not have, uh, think, about, think about my story. Then um, how do you get a mentor? I'll use what we have encountered in She Hacks. Um, a lady will approach you and tell you, hi, my name is, you know, Brenda. Could you please be my mentor? And you're like, okay. Then you exchange phone numbers. They go home, I go home. You know, Brenda is waiting for me to call her. She's waiting for me to, I'm waiting for her to call me. So we realized, by the way, how are we supposed to help ladies and there's no, you know, know how, how to do it. So first of all, how do you get a mentor? Do not propose, do not ask, can you be my mentor? Just approach somebody who you admire and want to be like in your field and ask them questions. How do I do this? How do I do that? I'll get back to you or they'll explain. That way it will be a growing relationship that will grow organically. This may sound as basic as it is, but I've seen many ladies who get so disappointed saying that I called so-and-so for her to be my mentor and you know, we have not talked, so it creates an expectation. Another way that you shouldn't, um, you know, um, what you shouldn't do is when you talk to your mentor, they tell you things in passing. You can look into this paper, you can make sure you look into this organization, and the next time you are talking with your mentee, you, are, you ask them, so did you look at this and this? Oh, no, 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 you know, I've been busy, school, um, internet, and you know you get deflated to help this person in their career. So be as accountable as you can be. And, um, like the I wrote there, do not wait to seek them. I mean, do not wait for them to seek you. You seek them. Make that call. Most times, a mentor will be mostly older than you or busier than you, so look for them. Do not wait for them to look for you. You're the one who needs them. They do not need you. Okay. Then, um, some of the... I'll give a personal story. Benefits of having one. I once met a lady at... Uh, course I was doing, a short course I was doing, and um, it went well, we finished the course, we interacted very well. Then it happened to that the company I was trying to apply a job to, she went there before I did. And I did not know she was there. I apply for the job, send my CV and all that, then she calls me very excitedly and told, tells me that, you know what Stella, I saw your CV and I told my boss that please make sure you hire this girl because if it is Stella, she'll do a good job. And because of past, she was very passionate about helping me, she was told to step out of the interview panel. And because of that, I was referred. Other than my technical skills, somebody spoke for me in that room. That's the power and strength of having a mentor. Now, another um, controversial, if I may say, is what is your role? as a lady in science. Um, 
Are you the lady who, when you see other ladies make it or gentlemen make it, you make a small group and criticize that success? Do you go saying, you know, it's because he's this, it's because he's that? You know, are you that lady who, when you have a bad job or a bad boss, you wake up one Monday morning and not show up and not pick phone calls? Do you burn bridges? Are you that lady or gentleman that uh, during projects and, 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 and uh, tasks, you end up doing the bare minimum and hide behind people's work, even in classwork? And are you that person who will do anything to get ahead of others, including lying? Um, I will not mention names, but I have seen very talented people who have done some of the things I've mentioned get a kickstart in the career, in the industry, but with time, nobody can, can even invite them for a simple talk like we are doing now because their reputation did not play that well for them. Okay. Now, at the end of the day, we have seen so many people rise to where they are because they help somebody else. Life is so intertwined. Nairobi is small. These industries are small. I'm just, I was just shocked to realize that uh, Daktari here is the boss to a class of, classmate of mine in my high school. And she asked me, do you know so-and-so? I told her, yeah, how is she? You know? And for example, if I was not what I presented myself to be, I wouldn't be in this room in the first place. Now, another thing that maybe should be talked about is your motif. And um, several ladies enter science fields because they got an A, A minus, or you know, their parent told them that engineering pays well, architecture pays well, you know, enter it. But how sustainable is that? How sustainable is entering a field for, that you'll do for the rest of your life net it's not coming from, your, from yourself? And um, there's so many ladies we have seen enter the Shihax community because they realized they were maybe photographers or whatever role they were having. They realized they, they actually are good at computers. If their computer has an issue, they quickly fix it, they'll Google. You know, they have so much passion for it. So we have so many people in our field cybersecurity because people have come from other fields and joined us. And we have also a very good percentage of ladies who fall out because it is too hard. You know, it becomes too much for them. They can't balance. And yet, if it's something that you are passionate about or you're gifted in, you will survive. Yeah? So ask yourself, why am I in this field? Is it because of the money? You won't last. Is it because of the prestige and how it looks cool? You won't last. And um, last but not least, uh, it is also known that as long as you're a lady in science, most likely you won't be married because you're too much, you know. And in case you get a child, you'll become too busy. And I want to tell you, you can do it all. You can have it all. You can have that lifestyle. You can have that job. You can have that family. You can have that, those, that group of friends, yeah? You can have it all. And um, I remember in my high school, I unfortunately did not do as I expected in my mock exams. And it devastated me because your mock, your mock exams are the ones that you know, dictate where you will sit during the KCPE exam. And I was wondering now that that means I'll fail. And I remember in our year, that's the year they used to print um, the top 100 students from all around the country. And I wanted to, this, to see, is there anybody who is in this newspaper that had a very funny looking index number? And actually went through one by one, and I saw a gentleman <laughs> in Alliance Boys, I believe he was um, index number, either one something or two something. And he had an A, a straight A. Just by seeing that, I believed I could do it. So, ladies and gentlemen, you can do it. Happy International Women's Day.